What is up guys, DZ here, and the other day we did a live stream with Traptrix Paleozoic Frogs, and it really blew me away. I knew Traptrix Sarah was good in a vacuum, but a lot of cards that look good on paper don't translate the best when you actually sit down and play them. Luckily though, in the case of Traptrix Sarah, the card actually sort of exceeded my expectations. So in today's video, we're going to do a deck profile of the deck similar to what I played on stream. This one is changed a little bit from actually some playing that I did off stream. I think that this deck is almost competitive and actually if you really wanted to play this deck at a competitive tournament like a locals or a regional qualifier you would have to change a few cards this deck is a couple cards over 40 so you definitely would have to cut it down to be exactly 40 so it'd be the most consistent but this is sort of like a starting version for someone that wants to just try the deck out with a lot of the available options certainly though if you want to cut some cards you can because it's more than 40. if you'd like to purchase any of these cards quick shout out to tcgplayer.com there is a link in the the description. This is a deck using new cards like Traptrix Sarah as well as old cards like the Frogs and the Paleos and the Traptrix Monsters. All these cards are available for purchase on tstplayer.com and it helps out the channel directly if you use that link in the description. Anyway, before we get into this profile, I think you need to know what Traptrix Sarah does. So this card says uh, it just takes one non-link Traptrix Monster so you can't use it itself and it has two effects. Well, I mean it has the first effect that it's unaffected by trap effects, but more importantly if a normal trap card is active you can special summon one Traptrix monster from your deck with a different name from the cards you control. And also, if uh, your other Traptrix monster's effect is activated, you can set one whole normal trap directly from your deck. So what this card does is it makes Traptrix Mermilio like a plus three or a plus four or something crazy like that because you summon the Mermilio, you add a trap hole to your hand, and then you summon the Sarah so that you've already plus one off of searching the trap hole. And then on your opponent's turn, you can use the trap hole to one for one trade with your opponent's monster. But then you special summon a Mermilio from the deck, which pops a back row and then that triggers Sarah's other effect to add a or set another whole card from your deck to your uh, back row. So that is just broken. I mean it really is and it really does combo well nicely with the paleos because this thing doesn't have to trigger off of just trap holes. It just triggers off of any normal trap cards. That's all the paleos. That's your impermanence. That you, that's your like trap tricks cards. There's so many cards that this thing triggers off of. It's just insane. But we'll uh, get to the deck list and we'll kind of point out the normal traps as we go along. So first off we have three copies of Swap Frog. Of course Swap Frog's like the best frog. We have three copies of Dupe Frog, and I do want to mention here, well, well I guess we'll show the two Ronin Totems. So one of the things that's funny about this deck is that I actually played Frogs at a YCS Dallas, like 2017, and I played Mermilio in that deck because uh, the Frog deck, it's it's cool. I like this deck a lot. I played it at a lot of events, but it uh, really lacks like good normal summons, good first turn cards, because uh, outside of Swap Frog, your best like play is set Dupe Frog Pass, which isn't very good in 2019, right? I mean, you got lots of cool back row, but I really felt like this deck needed more normal summons more cards that you could draw that you could actually play on the first turn that were good not just setting dupe frog and passing so i played mermilio and pass builds but what's really cool now is that you can just play mermilio as well as other trap tricks monsters and you gain a ton of advantage so we have the mermilio if you don't know what this card does when you normal summon you get to add a whole normal trap card to your hand pretty cool and then also when it's special summon you get to pop a back row and that is a mandatory effect and this the, the funny thing about mandatory effects even if your opponent does not control back row this thing will attempt to activate and that's important because if this thing attempts to activate the Sarah will always trigger to set the other hole so even if your opponent isn't in back row you'll at least get the advantage off of that effect and we have uh, two copies of Traptrix Dionea. So in this thing's normal summon, you can special summon a Traptrix from your graveyard. Really cool follow-up from the Mermilio because you get to pop another card. Then also, if you uh, like ran through the Mermilios, if you don't want to summon the Mermilio, when you summon this thing from the deck, when you special summon it or whatever, you get to set a hole from your graveyard for like two turns. But that's uh, it's kind of cool. It's not the best thing because uh, the problem when you summon this off of Sarah is that uh, you can summon this and you can set the hole, but then that can't be activated that turn. And then like it gets banished at the end end of your end phase so it's kind of rough but uh there is a combo with the other trap tricks we're playing which is trap tricks mantis so this card i went back and forth on I, I had like two copies originally i went up to three copies but now i'm back down to one copy it's like okay but i feel like you bogged on your deck a little too much if you play too many normal summons we already have a bunch here so i just have the one copy of mantis but this searches a trap tricks monster when you summon it so you can grab dynea you can grab mermilio um but then also when this thing's on the field you can bounce a back row to set a back row from your hand and that's cool because 
because if you have both of these, well, if you special summon the Dynea and then you like have a Mantis out, you can use Mantis's effect to bounce the whole card you set with the Dynea and then reset it so that it doesn't banish itself during the end phase, which is kind of neat. But those are the Trap Shakes monsters, those are the Frog monsters. These are your main like playmakers, and it's really cool. Um, you can draw some pretty insane hands in this deck. If you draw like Mermilio, Swap Frog, and then like a Water, it's not going to happen very often, but it is going to happen occasionally. And when that does happen, you almost always win those games. You just get so much advantage. The uh, the uh, Sarah card it obviously isn't as good as Toad, but it is pretty darn good and does give you a lot of advantage. And a lot of times it can stall until you draw the Toad. And at that point, your opponent has played through so many cards already, so many trap hole cards that you can just uh, really secure the board with the totally awesome. Then we play one Artifact Slice. So I wasn't doing this on stream, but if you're going to try to play this deck competitively, you really, really want to play Artifacts. You're already playing Trap Tricks, so you might as well just play the Sanctum because it's so good to set off the Trap Trick Monster or the Trap Tricks Trap, I should say. Sorry, it's like confusing. You got Trap Tricks Monsters, you got Trap Tricks Traps, and you have Trap Trick, the Trap card. But anyway, uh, Sanctum is really good to set off of Trap Trick, the Trap. So this card's really nice. And then we have, uh, for one of our hand traps, we have three copies of Ash Blossom. I actually do feel like it's important to play this card because a lot of times when you use the trap trick you don't have a lot of interruptions because you only use one more trap card that turn so if you have like one uh, monster card that you can use it's, it's pretty nice i like the card a lot for the Paleos, um, this is like the Paleo setup I've been rocking for a while. I know it's a little controversial, as you'll see in a second, but we just play three Canadia and three Olenoids. I really, really hate Dynamiscus. I know that a lot of people play it, and it's cool to search off the rank two Paleo monster, but it's, uh, man, it is so bad in so many hands. I mean, this deck's like okay because like you do end up with like normal summons in your hand, but a lot of times, like the best hands in this deck, you don't have any cards in your hand except maybe like an Ash Blossom. You don't want to discard Ash Blossom, uh, so I don't know. I don't really play Dynamiscus. In the first version of this deck, I played it and I really, really disliked it for all the reasons I just mentioned. I'm just uh, probably like one of the only Fog Paleo players that doesn't think that card is very good, but it's fine. Uh, so for the Trap Hole cards, we are playing three copies of Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare. This card is back and this card is really, really good. So the problem with a lot of Trap Hole cards, even the other ones that I'm playing because we're playing one Floodgate and one Bottomless, is that a lot of the Trap Hole cards don't negate effects. And a lot of cards these days have on summon effects that you really, really want to negate. So while these cards are good in some situations, it, this card is just like a searchable strike in a lot of cases, and it's just, uh, man, I mean, it negates the effect, it blows up the monster, it's really, really good, and I know back in the day when this card was popular, people would just like summon monsters and just not act with their effects, like Gear Gigant Axe and stuff like that, but uh, that's a very, very slow tempo play, and when you're playing against decks like Frogs, you really can't make slow tempo plays, because if they summon a Toad, like, you just lose, so you really gotta make those plays as fast as possible, then all of these cards just shut your opponent down, so it's uh, I don't know. I played around with a lot of ratios of cards. I played around with that. What is that card called? Like a uh, chain hole or something. Um, and that card was like, okay, but it really wasn't that great. In a lot of cases, I just felt like I needed something else. But Trap Tricks Trap Hole Nightmare was testing really, really strong for me. So I like it a lot. Sorry, I don't have three ultimates. Yeah, I should mention just in general, I was going to profile this deck on Team Samurai's channel, but I didn't. I lost a lot of my max rarity trap hole cards because um, I had three Super Mermilios. I had three ulti uh, nightmares, but I don't know where they are. It's really sad. After I played them at Dallas, I just seemed to have uh, misplayed the misplaced them but i have uh, a lot of cards around my room so they're probably somewhere but it, it's really sad rest in peace max rarity trap tricks mermilios um so also besides that no one cares about rarity discussions so we have a uh, trap trick not trap tricks this is the uh, pretty insane trap card that a lot of people are playing right now it lets you banish a normal trap card to set a card with the same name from your deck and you can activate it this turn so this thing can set like the the trap tricks trap hole nightmare of course it can set either of the paleo monsters but it can set so much more so it can also set these copies of Sanctums, which is really, really good, especially if you just want to lock your opponent out of the turn. This deck actually can OTK your opponent. You put a lot of monsters on the board with the Sarah, with the Toad, and the, the um, artifact itself is a monster, and then you just make Boral Sword and OTK them. So this card actually can do uh, lethal damage pretty easily. I, one thing that I really appreciate from the modern versions of Frogs back uh, versus back when I was playing them a couple years ago is that you actually do have Boral Sword Dragon, which uh, lets you finish games out. It used to be really hard to do that. You had to do like double Mist Our Boy Toad. But anyway, we have the three Sanctums. You have the three Impermanences, which you can also set off the Trap Trick. So you, you have so many different cards you can set off the Trap Trick. It is really, really important to have these. I know they're expensive right now, but they are getting reprinted in the Megatons, I believe. So you can set the Sanctums. You have the uh, Impermanences. You have the Paleos. You have the Trap Trick's Trap Bull Nightmare. So many cards you can set off Trap Trick. It's really, uh, there's really just no excuse to uh, not play that card in this deck unless you can't afford it. But if you can't afford it, you can just wait until it gets reprinted because I do feel like it is a very, very important piece of this deck. Yeah. 
So for the, that could have been just like a 40 card deck profile, but I really felt it was important to show you guys these last five cards. Even if you don't choose to play these, it's important to know that they're options. So I was playing at one point two crackdowns, pretty cool card. It's good. I felt like the problem if you don't play this card is that you just like really, really do lose going second a lot of time. This card's really nice going second. It's, it's pretty sweet. Uh, two copies of Strike. Beating Ray without this card is almost impossible. I mean, this deck is mostly going to just side deck for Sky Strikers, right? You're going to side deck cards like Anti-Spell Fragrance and things along those lines and then we have one copy of imperial order this card is uh, really good in this deck because if you noticed we play zero spell cards i do not like card of demise in this deck especially with all the extra normal summons we've added i do not really like pot of desires because if you banish a lot of the cards you can't just make plays um, i don't play pot of extravagance because the extra deck is way too important so there's zero spells in this main deck so imperial order seems like an auto include so that's uh, the five cards more than 40 uh, you don't necessarily have to cut these cards you can cut other cards in the deck if you don't want them to kind of depends on the metagame you're playing in as well i did think about cutting things like ash blossom sometimes just because it doesn't go like the overall strategy the deck's trying to do so anyway for the extra deck we have one copy of trap trick sarah there's a lot of cards i wanted to play in the extra deck and when we first started playing stack on stream we were playing two copies of this i never summon the second one if you can summon one of these you probably just win the game which i know sounds crazy but if you can summon this thing going first at least you probably win those games they just get so much advantage a lot of times they can't even kill this thing because your first trap holes is going to take take out something you have so many other trap cards so one seems fine it's obviously a really strong card there. And then we have uh, two copies of Mistar Boy, one copy of uh, whatever this thing is pronounced. So I was playing three Mistar Boy, but I got into a lot of situations where you'd have like Sarah, then Mermilio, and then like some frog monsters, and you can't make the Mistar Boy, and you really need the downpointing arrow. So I felt like this card's really important just like as a generic card. Um, keep in mind though that you can't summon Boral Sword with this. Um, I don't know. It's like kind of a weird situation where maybe you should play like Beat Cop instead, but I think this card's like fine. I don't even know. Does Beat Cop do anything? Probably should just play Beat Cop, but I <laughs> didn't think about that before putting this together but this card is uh, still pretty cool you just can't make the boral sword but it's fine you can still make avermax which is it, with this which is fine um because it is a an extra deck summon monster so then we have a uh, nightmare phoenix nightmare unicorn really important removal tools uh really keep in mind though the uh the ronin totem and dupe frog both change their name to the same monster when they're on the field so you can't make these cards with them um that definitely can catch a lot of players off guard so you got to remember that then we have the uh the avermax which you can summon with the land for rinkus whatever and I, <laughs> I shouldn't even try it it's so bad uh, and then the Boral Sword Dragon, which uh, you can't summon with the land thing, uh, but it's fine. You usually summon this thing with, like, Mistar Boy and two random cards. It doesn't really matter, but it's, uh, you just make this card when you just need to get cards off the field, basically, and make uh, down, downward pointing arrows. But those are, like, the, the big two finishers here. Really cool cards. Once again, neither of these cards was out when I, or were out when I was actually playing this deck competitively, so it's really cool that I get a chance to uh, play them so you can actually, like, finish games sometimes. So for the Xyz monsters, there are already a lot of them. So we have uh, three copies of Toad. You need to play three. I know they can recycle themselves, but it really is so important. One copy of Opabania. I'm not playing the other one. I just never summoned it. It doesn't really come up that often anyway, but especially because this deck has so much more removal than a standard Vogue Paleo deck, you don't really need the, uh, the big uh, rank two monster. One copy of Rafflesia. Oh, uh, this card's like okay. It, it's kind of weird because if you can make Rafflesia, by that point you could have already made the Sarah. You probably already have made the Sarah. If we're being completely honest, because you usually make the Sarah turn one. Then if you die Nia, like I guess you can make this card if you need like a defensive option. Um, it doesn't come up too often, but it feels like it should be a card that's included in the deck because uh, it is kind of cool. Um, sometimes you need to search the Trap Trick Hole Nightmare with the Mermilion, then maybe set another copy of it with the Sarah. So if you summon like uh, this thing, you can send the Floodgate or send the Bottomless, whatever it comes up with the situation. This card also opens up interesting side deck options if you just side deck like one of trap hole cards you can make use of them with this thing without actually drawing them or searching them one copy of dweller probably the best rank four monster that you can play right now so i gotta include it and then one copy of baguska there were matchups where the reflesia and the dweller were both like pretty lackluster and i felt like i just needed some like floodgate type rank four monster to summon and that's where this thing comes in it's like okay obviously this card loses a lot of value against the decks that can link summon very easily without using on field effects which happens to be several decks right now but it still is pretty good and it will buy you a few turns uh, or maybe at least one turn which is kind of neat and then you can obviously just turn it off by switching to attack position then you can use your own effects but these are kind of like the exceeds monsters that i felt came up the most often you certainly could try to play like uh, lightning was another card i thought of instead of uh, these two cards just playing utopia and then utopia the lightning kind of an interesting little engine you can pack into the extra deck there uh, anyway though that's going to wrap up today's deck profile on this trap tricks frog paleo deck like i said it's 45 cards so feel free to take out anything that you don't have or 
or don't feel is good for the format. Um, but this deck is a ton of fun. We beat a lot of people on stream with it. I know it's just kind of like Yu-Gi-Oh Pro or whatever, but it really felt good when I was playing it. A lot of times when you go first, you just have so many more cards you can draw and not just Swap Frog and Dupe Frog, but you have the tra any Trap Tricks normal summon is really, really solid. Even just summoning Dynea to get Trap Tricks Sarah isn't the worst thing in the world because the Sarah itself, even without the Mermelio, gets a ton of advantage. And uh, like I said at the beginning, if you'd like to purchase any of these cards, maybe you're just missing a few of them. Maybe you have Frogs and Paleo sitting around without the Trap Tricks monsters or the Trap Tricks Trap Hole. Definitely go to tcplay.com using my link in the description below that goes right back into the channel. I would appreciate it so much when you guys buy Yu-Gi-Oh cards if you use that link because it does help me out a ton. Anyway though, I'll see you guys later. Thank you so much for watching today's deck profile and discussion video. Goodbye.